The business at Rangers never stops. It's madness. Stay tuned, my friend. These are today's headlines. John Bennett can land an expert sporting director with a free run at former Rangers captain. Rangers announcement labeled horrible as supporters are set to pay the price. Rangers takeover, Stefan Borson gives the thumbs up for a 150 million pounds deal. Rangers free agent target Stephen Alzate undergoes medical ahead of transfer. EFL chairman reveals Rangers were trying to sign a Man City defender this summer. Make sure to hit the like button on the video and comment, we are the people. Now you know as well as I do, things haven't exactly been running like a well-oiled machine lately. It's a bit like watching a car with one wheel stuck in the mud. No CEO, no academy director, and poor Philippe Clement is probably juggling more jobs than he signed up for. Honestly, the man's doing more admin than coaching. Remember last summer? Michael Beale had his hands full too after Ross Wilson packed his bags for Nottingham Forest. Well, fast forward, and guess what? One of the blokes interviewed to replace Wilson was none other than Carlos Bocanegra. Yep, you heard that right. Former Rangers captain, USA international, and all-around football brainiac. He could have been sitting in that big chair calling the shots, but no. He decided to stay put at Atlanta United, where he's been the technical director. But here's where it gets interesting. Boca Negra's just left his post over there. Atlanta United's owner, Arthur M. Blank, yeah, the guy with the cash, gave him a glowing farewell, thanking him for basically turning the club into an MLS powerhouse. And let's be real. This guy knows how to build a team from scratch and win trophies. That's the kind of know-how we could use right now, especially with all the chaos going on. Now imagine this, Boca Negra strolling back into Ibrox, but this time not as a player, but as the man to oversee the whole football operation. He's got the experience, he's got the contacts, and let's not forget, he's captained nearly every team he's been in. The bloke's got leadership running through his veins, and we've been crying out for that lately, haven't we? Sure, Europe's a different kettle of fish compared to MLS, but don't forget, Boca Negra's no stranger to our side of the pond. He's played in France, England, Scotland, Spain, you name it, he's been there. He knows what it takes to sign players in these parts, and he's not afraid to get his hands dirty in the boardroom either. Here's the kicker. Rangers missed a trick by not snapping him up last season. But now, there's no club to negotiate with, no strings attached. John Bennett could bring him in with zero fuss, no transfer fees, no drama, just a steady, experienced hand to help get us back on track. So what do you reckon? Could be the move we need to stop this circus and bring a bit of stability back to the club. Rangers have decided to play St. Johnstone at 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. Yeah, you heard that right, a Sunday night. Absolute nightmare, isn't it? Now, apparently, it's all because of the great Scottish run clogging up the streets of Glasgow earlier in the day. So we're stuck with this ridiculous late kickoff. What a way to treat the fans, eh? The lads over at Four Lads Had a Dream have already called it out, saying it's horrible news for both sets of supporters. And I reckon they're spot on. I mean, can you imagine trying to get to Ibrox at that time, let alone getting home? If you're coming from far away, you're looking at all sorts of travel chaos late night trains, buses on Sunday schedules. And if you're really unlucky, you might be shelling out for a taxi. And we all know that's not going to be cheap. Who's got extra 50 pounds just lying around for that sort of hassle? 50 pounds, it's madness. Now chuck in the great Scottish run and you've got road closures and traffic jams galore. It's not just about making it to the game, it's getting there without pulling your hair out from frustration. And let's be real, this whole situation takes the fun out of what should be a cracking match day. You're spending half the time worrying about getting stranded rather than enjoying the game. And the kicker? The clubs didn't even fight it. Why would they, right? They know that if some fans can't make it, others will take their place and the money keeps rolling in. It's a lousy way to treat loyal supporters, especially the traveling fans who are now looking at an even bigger headache trying to make it back home. Honestly, they might as well throw in a tent with your ticket at this point. So, there you have it. Rangers v. St. Johnstone at 8 p.m. on a Sunday. It's like they're trying to make it as difficult as possible for us, but hey, we'll be there anyway. Rangers might be up for grabs again with talk of a potential takeover worth about 150 million pounds. Yep, that's the kind of cash they're throwing around these days. Now, before you get too excited, finance expert Stefan Borson's got a few words of caution for anyone looking to buy into the club. He's basically saying, hold your horses, lads. 
It's not as simple as it looks. So apparently a bunch of American investors are sniffing around thinking Rangers is worth a tidy sum. But here's the thing. Borson reckons valuing Rangers is trickier than trying to predict the Scottish weather. The whole deal is so tied up with Europe that it's like trying to balance on a tightrope. One bad season in Europe and poof, the value could take a hit. And let's not forget, Celtic's been running the show for the last decade, with Rangers only managing to nick the title once in the past 13 seasons. Not exactly a shining investment record, is it? Now, Borson's not saying Rangers aren't worth anything, quite the opposite. But he's waving a big red flag to potential buyers, saying there aren't a lot of clubs like Rangers to compare it to. In fact, the only real comparison in Scotland is Celtic. The rest of the Scottish clubs? Well, they're not even in the same league when it comes to value. So yeah, 150 million pounds might sound like a fair price for Rangers, but Borson's not rushing to the bank to buy his share, that's for sure. And after what happened with that American takeover falling through last year, it seems like anyone interested better have a good think before they jump in. Honestly, who knows what'll happen next, but it's clear this isn't going to be a simple hand over the cash and walk away deal. If these American investors do decide to make their move, they'd better come prepared. The roller coaster ride that is Rangers FC isn't slowing down anytime soon. Looks like we're in a bit of a race against time if we want to nab Steven Alzat before Hull City seals the deal. The 25-year-old Colombian, who used to knock about at Brighton, has already had his medical with Hull, so they're pretty much rolling out the red carpet for him. Now you've probably heard the buzz. Back in June, there was talk of Alzat coming to Rangers. Dan Bardell from TalkSport even backed us to get him. But here we are in September, and Hull have swooped in. Belgian journalist Sacha Tavalieri saying Alzadi is keen on the Hull move and they're expecting to announce it within 24 hours. So basically, we're in the last chance saloon if we're going to do anything about it. Now, don't get me wrong, Rangers could still make a cheeky last-minute play for him. We've got the allure of a bigger stage, the chance to play in Europe, and let's face it, the Scottish Premiership's a bit more competitive than the Championship. Plus, we could offer him more regular first-team football. That's got to be tempting, right? talzadi has got Premier League experience, a decent loan spell in Belgium under his belt, and the ability to play all over the midfield. That versatility would give us some tactical options, which is exactly what we need with all the European games coming up. His passing's sharp, he can move the ball up the pitch, and he's got a good balance of creativity and defensive grit. In short, he'd fit in nicely at Ibrox. Honestly, it's a no-brainer. This could be a low-risk, high-reward signing for us. Clement would love to have him on board, and if we move quickly, there's still a chance we could nick him right from under Hull's nose. But we've got to be fast. Time's ticking. Let me tell you about a deal that slipped right through our fingers this summer. Now Rangers were busy bringing in new faces, 10 signings no less, but it seems like we missed out on one more big one from Manchester City. And it wasn't just any player, it was Jadel Katongo. 19-year-old defender who was all set to come to Ibrox, but at the last minute, that move fell apart. Now here's where it gets interesting. Peterborough United's chairman, Dara McAnthony, spilled the beans on his podcast, saying Katongo had actually been lined up for us. The deal was practically done, but for some reason, it fell through right before the deadline. So instead of donning the famous Rangers blue, young Katongo is spending another season on loan with Peterborough. Bit of a gut punch, eh? McAnthony goes on to explain that Peterborough had been after the lad all summer, but they kept hearing he was either heading to the championship or, more likely, Scotland. And by Scotland, they meant Rangers. But when that move fell through, Peterborough pounced. They had to shell out a fair bit more in wages than they did last year, but in the end they got their man. Now, Katongo's no slouch. Last season he played 43 games for Peterborough, and the lad's versatile. He can slot in as a center back, step out to right back, or even play as a defensive midfielder. Imagine having that kind of flexibility in our back line. But alas, this one got away and we're left wondering what could have been. So while Philippe Clement was busy rebuilding the squad this summer, this was one deal that just didn't come off. It's a shame, really. Katongo could have been a great addition, but hey, Peterborough got lucky and we'll just have to keep our eyes peeled for the next big thing. I'll be back with more bombastic and exclusive Rangers news at any moment. If you don't want to miss any, just hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, alright? We are the people.